Bosch Security Escort File Transponder Database. The transponder database is really where the receivers, the transponders, and the whole interaction comes together to display the alarm to the end user and how it's calculated in alarm. Over the next several videos, we're going to talk about receivers, receiver placement, areas, and how to adjust and tune receivers. Bosch Security Escort. File, Transponder Database. In the Transponder Database, this is where you have to create transponders, assign receivers, place receivers, and create areas. This is also where you do your third-party integration to other hardwares. So we're going to start with inserting a new transponder. Select Transponder, give it a name. Your form of communication is either TCP or RS-232. If you're using TCP, that means that you're using a serial to Ethernet connector at the transponder. For this case, we're going to use RS-232. COM port index A is, was described in a previous video. Um, illustrating what COM port index A and how that's assigned to a COM port. The ID is the dip switched address on the transponder where we support from 1 to 255. For this example, my transponder is 255. At this point, you have a receiver here that doesn't have any information, but we don't need to test that or we don't want to do anything with that right now. So we're going to go ahead and hit cut. Now we're going to go ahead and hit save and cancel. All right, so now we have added a transponder and we need to verify that it's working. We do that by going to setup, transponder current status. You'll see that it says test transponder. This is out of the drop down list, the only transponder we have in the list. We go ahead and do reset transponder troubles, and then we do a stress test. Right here, you see that our stress test is failing because we have information going out, but nothing coming back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uncheck stress test, hit cancel, and now we're going to check our COM port index to make sure that is set up correctly. We do that by selecting Setup, Transponder, COM Port, and we see that we have COM Port 5. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and check our Device Manager. And we do have a COM port 5 that we are utilizing. All right. So that is correct. This is correct. We check our connection to the transponder. And we go back and we check the transponder current status again. So we hit reset and now stress test and now everything is working. The window down here shows all the current troubles that are currently going on with the transponder. Let it be a low battery, a tamper. Um, and as you can see, it's restored two receivers that are not currently programmed in the database. So we'll go ahead and address that in a little bit. Bosch, Security Escort, File, Transponder Database. 
Now that we have added our transponder, named the test transponder, utilizing a serial connection under COM port index A, and we validated that this transponder is currently communicating, we want to go ahead and add receivers. We do this by selecting Edit Data. When you select Edit Data, it allows you to add trans uh, receivers to this transponder or create areas. This radio box in the middle allows you to pivot between show points, which is receivers, and show areas, which are for specific sections on the map where an alarm can show up and integrate to a third-party hardware software or add additional labeling to the system. We'll cover that later. Under show points, we're going to go ahead and add a receiver. So, let's talk about adding the receiver at the bottom right here. Right now we have point type as none. Under this drop down box, we have receiver, alert unit, virtual, and none. We're going to go ahead and select receiver. As you can see right here, we have bus 0, 0.0. This bus number is 0 through 7 because there are 8 buses on the transponder. And point 0 is out of 0 through 7 because it can have up to 8 receivers per bus. You can adjust this number by using the plus and minus button. And it will shuffle through all of the buses and all of the points. You can also see up here that the number is equal to the actual number position out of 64, 0 being a number. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to select bus 0, point 0. The floor level is whatever floor level the receiver is going to be on. For this, we're going to use floor 1. The map number has to correlate to the correct floor number. Like I said previously, the map is supposed to be the entire covered area floor by floor. So if you're covering one building, it would be the an image of the building's floor plan for floor by floor. Each map would be its own individual floor plan. If we're talking about an entire campus, it would be the entire campus floor by floor. Because we're starting with floor 1, we're going to go with map 0. This is where you give the actual position of where the receiver is located. After you have a description of where it's physically located, you hit locate, and this will give you crosshairs. Now, when you right click to place the receiver, the dot is going to come off the bottom right quadrant, like so. Then release. And after you release it, it'll bring you back to this screen. And that's how you add a receiver. Let's go ahead and do that again. Under bus 0 0.1, we're going to go ahead and select receiver. We're going to go ahead and give it a floor number. We're going to make sure that our map number correlates with our floor number. We're going to put in a description of where it's located. Then you're going to go ahead and hit locate. And then the re receiver dot's going to come off the bottom right hand corner. So you're going to make sure that you place your crosshairs correctly. Right click and then release. After you place your receivers for this transponder, you go ahead and hit save. 
I would suggest hitting save and going back into edit data frequently so that you don't accidentally lose information that you've already put in on the off chance something happens that takes you out of the screen. Bosch Security Escort. File. Transponder Database. Well, now that we've added a transponder and we've added receivers, we're going to go ahead and select Edit and we're going to do Show Areas. Areas are sections of the map that you draw a border around and it shades it off into an area. The reason for this is to identify that you have an alarm in that section. It allows you to have some additional text displayed to the end user on what to dispatch to. Also, if we take a look at what's going on down here, <clears throat> we have number. This is the area number. All right, so area one, two, three, four, five, six, six etc. All right, and it goes all the way to area 79. We're going to start with area zero. Serial output here is the serial string that you can customize to send to a third-party hardware or software uh, vendor to turn on cameras, turn on relays, etc. All you have to do to test this feature is put in a serial string here, select serial output, and it will send that string out the serial port assigned to that third-party hardware or software. Over here we have alert 1, 2, and 3. This allows you to select a alert unit programmed in the system to sound off either horn, strobe, or whatever function you have it set up to, um, to trigger an output that is appropriate for the area. Um, pager group is how we send this alarm to a pager. We'll cover that later. So this is also where you select what floor it is. So in this case, we're going to select floor one. Uh, floor one is map zero. We're going to go ahead and select lobby for the name. This is a text that will be displayed to the end user when there's an alarm in this area. After you have all that done, you select locate. You get your crosshairs back again. You right click, that sets the first point, and if you right click and hold, you'll see that you get a line. And you go ahead and you keep doing that until you draw an area that is applicable to the building that you're covering. So this blue shaded area is an area. When, a duck, when the alarm duck comes into this square, it'll perform all the functions. I'm going to hit escape to go back to the previous screen. It'll perform all the functions that are listed here. After you have all your areas in place, you can go ahead and select save. Bosch, security escort, file, transponder database, edit, show areas. Now that we've created one area, we're going to go ahead and create a few more areas for this facility or for this building. We're going to go ahead and press the plus button to go to the next area. We'll select floor one, which is also map zero. Put in a description that will be displayed to the end user. <clears throat> Excuse me. Locate. All right, and we're going to go ahead and right click. And like I said, you're just going to, you want to have these areas overlap a little bit. All right, right click again. Move down a little bit. Right click. Right click. And then right click. And now I have another area. After you have this area, you go ahead and hit escape to go back. All right, we're going to move to the next area. 
select floor one. <coughs> map zero, put into the description. Hit locate. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and right click. Right click. And if for some reason you accidentally click way off in the space, as you can see, my area lines are way off over here. And there's no way to delete those. What you have to do is you have to close the origami or the object. All right. And then the next time you right click, it'll be the start of the new one. All right. So what happens if you can't seem to get it to close over here? You just keep clicking until it happens. Otherwise, at 32 clicks, it will then start all over again. For example, let's just go ahead and show you that. I'll do 32 clicks. So, trying to get it to close over here. Oh, I got it to close. See how at some point it just closed because I got to 32 clicks. All right, so that's how you uh, fix problems inside of your areas. All right, so we're gonna fix that area with a slight overlap, all right, and that is it. So now we have three areas. Bosch, Security Escort, File, Transponder Database. Now in the screen right here for transponder database, the buttons on the right, import and export, imports or exports the transponder data of the receivers only to a XML uh, Excel sheet so they can be imported into another security escort installation. This is commonly used if using if upgrading from an old version to a new version of Security Escort. Insert new allows you to in, add a transponder to the transponder database. You do not locate transponders on the map as the system doesn't care where the transponder is located. It only cares where the receivers are located. Edit data allows you to edit the currently selected transponder. Kill transponder, as indicated here, will delete the transponder, and there's no way to undo this. Delete point deletes only the receiver that is currently presented copy and this screen right here copies the whole transponder let me go ahead and show you how that works this is extremely helpful in a multi-story facility where all the stories or all the floors are semi-identical -identi with the receiver locations the idea would be to set up one transponder per floor then Finish one transponder, hit copy, and that creates a whole new transponder with all of the same receivers. So at this point, we have test transponder. We'll make it test transponder two. <clears throat> we'll give it its new address. In this case, we'll do 254. It's still under RS-232 under Comport Index A. And as you can see down here, it has the two receivers that are were from the previous transponder. Now, receivers need to be stacked floor to floor, so this is a good thing because the receivers are already plotted. The only thing I need to do is change the floor number and the map number. And then give it a new installation location all right 
iPad. Do the same thing for this receiver. All right, change the floor number, change the map number. All right, so now when we look look at this, because we've changed the floor number and we've changed the map number, you'll see that it shows up in exactly the same spots on the second floor. The same thing with the areas. The areas all get copied over as well. Well, because I didn't change the floor number. All right, and we'll change the map number. We'll do that for all three areas. All right. Map number. Floor number. Map number. Floor number. And now if we hit locate, you'll see that this is exactly the same areas as we have on the floors below. The only one that we would need to redraw is the top one because this building doesn't ex this section of the building doesn't exist out here. But this is where copy for the transponder is very helpful in a multi-story facility. It makes installation extremely easy because once you do one floor, you can just copy all your work and just change the text. After you're done doing that, um, we're going to go ahead and address that one area real quick here. We're just going to go ahead and right click a few times. All right, hit escape and hit save. That is it. Bosch, security escort, file, transponder database. We're going to go ahead and select test transponder and edit data. Now, under Show Points, and it's the same for Show Areas, the button's on the right. The top one is Locate. Cut, Delete, the current receiver or area. Copy makes a copy of the current area or receiver. And Paste, Paste it. So in a scenario where you have a transponder covering more than one floor, and it's very important that the receiver's XY position on the map is the same floor to floor, this is where you would select a receiver that exists on both floors, picking one floor that already is programmed. <clears throat> you select copy. You move to the new location, you hit paste, you have to change the floor number, the map number, and then if you look at locate, you'll see that that is exactly above where it is located on the floor below. So that is how you copy and paste between inside of a singular transponder. Hit escape to not change anything. All right, and then you would hit save. Bosch, security escort, file, transponder database. We're gonna select tr test transponder and edit data. Now that we've covered transponders, place and receivers, place and areas, copy and transponders and copy and receivers, Let's go ahead and talk about the other point options that are available inside of a transponder. So, under point type, we have alert unit. This is the output to a horn strobe, or you could use a uh, another relay to make it a dry relay to trigger a third-party system. Um, these do not get located on the map. You just put in a description And then you would just hit save. 
under point type and virtual, the way that virtual works is it takes two receivers that are physically there. All right. So I'm going to take receiver zero and take receiver one. Those are my two physically located receivers that actually exist. All right. We're going to give it a floor number and a map number. I normally put for location VR between 0 and 1 just so that in the history log I can identify the VR receiver and then comma Go ahead and hit locate, and I want my VR receiver to show up here. So, <clears throat> what this does is it takes the value of the signal heard from, which is from 0 to 255, takes the two numbers, adds them together, and then divides it by 2, and that is the new value heard from by this virtual receiver. Hit save. And then hit cancel to close.